Good evening all, and welcome. Tonight we are going to venture into the depths of the forest, for tales of Bigfoots and creatures unknown. Also, huge thank you to all my amazing patrons for your continued support. If you'd like to receive some or all of the perks you see on screen, consider signing up today, as it helps me out a bunch. Link in the description. But for now, it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. This didn't happen to me, but to both of my parents. My mum was a teenager and was at the lake with her family. She was around 17. Her brother of two years younger, their two cousins, and their two St. Bernards were there also. They were all walking along a paved path in a campground type area. The dogs suddenly started losing their mind, trying to run back the way they came, which was in the opposite direction from the cabin, but they wouldn't leave my mum and uncle. They weren't on leashes, but one of them actually bit my mum's shorts and began pulling her backwards, like a bad comedy movie. That was totally unusual behaviour, as both dogs were extremely loyal and rather protective, but were generally pretty chill and friendly. They were all just standing around and laughing at the dog's weird behaviour, not understanding what was going on. Then, my mum, says it seemed like they all looked up at the exact same moment. One of the dogs started to whimper and cower like it was absolutely terrified. All four of them looked up at the trees to the right of the trail in front of them and saw a Bigfoot. It was extremely close. This was near dusk. It was maybe eight yards away and mind-blowingly huge. My mum guessed it was anywhere between 8 to 10 feet. And all four of them are adamant to this day that it was nothing like a bear, and nothing else it could be compared to. The creature was staring at them, just inside the tree line, as it crouched down when they looked. Not like it was trying to hide or about to pounce. My mum said it was almost like a person who was trying to greet a dog that was shy. The moment was really brief, then it straightened up and crossed the path into the trees on the other side, eyeballing them the whole way. My mum says it didn't put off any antagonistic or threatening vibes, more just wary and almost forced casual. Nothing to see here move along. Not that that stopped my mother and co from being absolutely terrified. As soon as they unfroze and coaxed the dogs to carry on, they all booked it back to the cabin. When they told everyone about it, some of the others, a few of her uncles, her other brother, and another cousin, went back around to look. The dogs absolutely refused to go near that path though, and would freak out whenever my mum or her siblings tried to go in that direction again for the rest of the weekend. My mum is an extremely rational person, and doesn't believe in supernatural things generally, and she is not a person who ever exaggerates or bends the truth. So there really isn't anyone I would trust more in a first-hand account like this. Now, my dad. Not as honest and grounded as my mum, but with his own strong moral code about some things, and also not an exaggerator nor a liar. He is an alcoholic, so he did lie about stuff all the time, but he isn't the type to make up stories like this. My dad was an avid outdoorsman, and this took place before his alcoholism surfaced. There are few people as well versed about the area as him. He knows the woods, the animals, the weather and the vegetation, and he can calmly identify the screams of cougars, dying rabbits, or deer, all the native birds, and anything else that one might hear in the woods around here. 
he is also a very calm, unflappable person. I remember a time when I was around 10, when we were out hunting, and he calmly pointed out a cougar that had been stalking us for several miles. It took me forever to spot it even with him describing its location. After that, he forced me to continue on, rationally explaining the cat's behaviour in a regular level of speaking tone, knowing we weren't going to come across any deer. Anyway, about 15 years ago, my dad was hunting one of his usual areas. He was alone, which was typical for him. He was about four miles in from the logging road where he parked, and the sun had just barely come up. He was heading towards a creek that was always kind of the central starting point that he and we used when hunting that area. He was wandering around, looking for a sign and finding absolutely nothing recent, which is very unusual in this area, when he heard what he described as the most utterly terrifying noise he's ever encountered. Not having heard it myself, I might not be describing it accurately, but from what I remember he said, it was multi-tonal, as if two to three voices of varying pitches were screaming in disharmonic unison. If they hadn't gone up and down in pitch, and started and ended simultaneously, he would have thought that there were several different voices. Every hair on his body stood on end, and he said he was overcome with a horrifying feeling of dread. The voice? He said that it had individual pitches that were rather human-like, and it screamed for longer than any human lungs could sustain. He estimated well over a minute, and it did not pause, nor did it happen again when it ended, and that the way the sound reverberated gave him the impression it came from very far away, but given the ear, splitting volume that didn't make total sense either. Anyway, he decided to get the hell out of there. The conundrum he faced was that the sound came from the same general direction as his truck, he told me that he rationalised that he would rather be found torn to bits by some mythical beast, than die embarrassingly from getting lost in the woods, as it may happen if he went in the other direction. But also part of him was afraid he was misreading something, and that it was the sound of an animal in pain, which he couldn't stand the idea of, and if he did come across it, he could either help it or put it out of its misery. The last thing he told himself before heading back to his truck, is that if it was a hunting cry, the animal who made it was most likely sprinting in another direction, and unless it ran into him and his .30 head on, they would probably not meet. So he headed back. He sprinted noisily, figuring that there were more of whatever that was out there, and that they already knew he was there anyway. He said he carried his rifle rather than slinging it on his back as he normally would have, rounded a chamber and safety off. This, more than anything, is a testament to his fear. My dad was the biggest gun safety advocate I've ever met, and I'm a hunter safety instructor, so that's saying something. About a mile from his truck, he came across an area, I picture a clearing, but I can't remember what he said, that smelled horrific. I remember him saying it was a mix of garbage and decay, and several other things as well. He was covering his nose with his shirt to get through, and he came across a pile of extremely fresh deer guts. That wasn't the sound of the smell that he would have known, but he said they were in a pretty neat pile, and it was at least two animals worth. It was guts and legs that looked to be almost torn off, not cuts, but no head or carcasses or pelts or anything. There was a good amount of blood smeared around, but no puddle, as would be typical of an animal that bled out by another hunter. He said that he took a little while while looking around, as he's a passionate anti-poacher, and was looking for evidence about what was going on. But... That's about the time that his brain clicked, and came to the conclusion that he may have interrupted Bigfoot's lunch, so he broke the hell out of there. He got to his truck, 
and didn't take his pack off or even buckle up until he was off the mountain. I remember listening to him telling me and my brother the story when we got home from school that day and being baffled. I grew up in a small coastal Oregon town. Nothing ever happens, and it's always quiet. From my childhood home, you could look one direction and see nothing but ocean in the distance, and in the other, forest covered mountains. You would hear stories from old people sitting around campfires after a few beers that had loosened their tongues about the stuff they'd seen on the ocean or out in the deep woods. Loggers would frequently tell about Sasquatch and footprints the size of a man's chest or the howl that sounded like nothing else a seasoned hunter had ever heard. I was a hard kid, hard life, hard attitude. I trusted no one, didn't believe anything unless I saw it myself, and none of these tales really did anything for me other than give me a little chuckle. I was a pretty poor kid and had nothing but hand-me-downs and government food and stuff. So I learned like many folk in the area to supplement our food by foraging and hunting. I was probably around 12 or so, and I was on foot after about a three hour hike into old forest growth with just my dog and I going up to our Chantelier mushroom patch to pick for the day. Being that deep was not uncommon for a boy my age, as that was just what you did. No big deal. I was deep enough that the only trails were made by deer and elk, and I only knew how to get there by following a trail of surveyor ribbon that I had left on branches of trees. Deep enough that the moss and brush ate up all the sounds, even your footsteps to the point a bird call would even echo like a siren. We were in the patch for a while, picking and stacking the mushrooms, just me and my rowdy German Shepherd slash wolf hybrid. And I had a good stack with no slug marts or mushy spots. Rowdy usually slept the whole time I picked, but this time he was pacing about. But I didn't pay much attention because sometimes he got a wild hair and just did stuff differently as his nature. All of a sudden, while I was picking, he ran up to me and whined like he did when he needed to pee in the mornings and began circling me. And that's when I felt it. You know the feeling when something is definitely watching you, but you can't tell from where or what it is? The hair on my neck stood up and my skin started tingling and that flight reaction in my gut told me to run, but I didn't. I listened. I didn't hear anything except Rowdy whining for a few seconds and went back to filling my pack. A bit quicker now, as I had seen cougar and bear feces in the area and bears will eat mushrooms. By this time, Rowdy was visibly freaking out and it was freaking me out, but I was determined to go home with my harvest. All of a sudden, Rowdy just took off and left me. He had never done such a thing. And then I heard a branch break behind me. Not a twig, a branch, and another. I ran as fast as a white boy alone in the woods could. And then the thing was pacing me. I could hear it off to my right and then behind me again to my left. I knew that there was a clearing up ahead where I could follow the power lines down and ran even harder. When I got to the clearing, Rowdy was there with his hackles raised and growling as he started barking and snarling like he could have a while back. Then it screamed. It wasn't an elk or coyote or anything I've ever heard before. And it was so loud and guttural and close, I screamed back out of pure fear and nearly pissed myself on the spot. The dog and I started running again and I didn't hear it following this time. We made it home, and I told my parents, and they laughed at me for being a little wuss. 
said it was probably an elk or something, and to stop being silly. So I dropped it, and only told the few people that shared similar stories with me. We went back a few months later, and the whole patch had been rooted up, like an elk got to it, with their racks. So maybe it was just that. But I don't know. I was camping on a reservation, and walked up to the lake from the campground. It was a 20 minute walk to the lake. To the left, there was a destroyed and decaying elevated wooden path through a dead swamp, and to the right, the pipe from the water station at a lake. When we got to the lake, all the animal noises had stopped. The lake was tannin stained and pitch black. The trees were all burned or dead, and the dock was floating, not attached to anything. We went on the dock, and I stayed there while the other two went and took the crappy one oar rowboat out to the water. The whole time it was absolutely silent, and my gut was screaming danger. It took them a while to paddle back to the dock, but they were freaking out too. So we hightailed it out of there. And once we were halfway back, we left the silence and immediately heard birds. I took a few steps back and it was basically silence. First few steps forwards, and birds. Not exactly a Bigfoot encounter I know, but creepy nonetheless, and there are Bigfoot sightings and reports around all the time I was there. It is said that if a Bigfoot is in the area, everything will go quiet because they are afraid of it, and know it's there. I think that's probably what happened. I live in North Texas, near a large wildlife refuge, and a lake bigger than my hometown. One night, I had a fantastic idea to go down the long gravel road to a dock with a female friend of mine. I'm from Texas, so I usually carry, but opted to leave my gun locked in the glove box by the gate. About 30 yards into the trek, the road was about 200 yards to the dock, I hear an unnerving noise on my left. It was as if the earth itself growled and rumbled at me. I looked around frantically, trying to pinpoint the sound, but there was nothing. We stood still, waiting for it to resume. Instead, we hear just heavy footsteps, not crashing or rustling like a bear or a pig does, but heavy pacing. I turn to my friend and ask if she wants to go back. She didn't know but wanted to get out of there, so we kept on our journey to the dock with the unnatural growling slash rumbling following us, coupled with the heavy paces. I'm terrified at this point instinctively reaching for my right hip to find a blank space where a holster should be. I had left it in the glove box. I grab my pocket knife and palm it aggressively. The rumbling continues, almost impacting the air with its weight. We hasten our pace, and it matches ours, but never coming out of the woods to show itself. This continues for about 300 yards. The entire time, I am absolutely terrified. I've been hunting and camping since I was six, and I've never heard a sound like this one, or even had an experience similar. Finally arriving to the dock, she sprints out to the edge and I grab a handful of rocks and go sit beside her. For the next 15 minutes, it circles the area around the dock landing, emanating the rumbles and growls. Nothing we can do. It's dark. We have no form of weaponry, and we can't see. I call my buddy Dennis, who lives five minutes away. The rumbling and pacing continues, roughly 30 to 40 yards away from us, but it doesn't step foot on the dock. Finally, I see headlights come up over the trees, and the rumbling fades into the darkness. Dennis comes walking down, cradling a rifle, and that was the end of that. Really freaked me out for a few months. I am a believer in cryptozoology now. I don't know if Bigfoot exists, but something does that may be similar, especially considering 
that most cultures have their monsters. I am an avid outdoorsman in Eastern Canada. I have seen some strange things out in the bush, and I will share them with you today. I live in New Brunswick, and for those wondering, it's right above the state of Maine. Every June, my friends and I will take a deep trip into the Appalachian Mountains for a few weeks, just set up camp and enjoy the few weeks until we return to busy life in the city. I am by no means a novice outdoorsman, so I know what to bring and to definitely bring a gun. I never go into the woods without a firearm, because you never know. Boy, am I sure glad I brought it. The day finally came for our trip. We all met at a local Tim Hortons and made the journey to the car lot to store our cars for the next few weeks we would be gone. After arriving at the lot, we unloaded, and made sure we had all the right gear for the trip. Food, water, fire-making supplies and firearms. The place where we would be camping is about a five to seven hour hike into the deep forest, far away from civilization. The hike to the camp was uneventful, but after the six-ish hours of leg workout we finally got, we then set up our tents. The first night was a typical night, full of drinking and playing card games. After about five hours of that, at around 10pm, we all went to bed. I woke up at 2am still a little tipsy from our party, and a couple of hours before, and went outside to take a leak. I stumbled out drunkenly, and found a good tree about 15 yards away from the tent. Midstream, I hear this whooping sound. Almost sounded like a juggalo concert, to be honest. It caught me off guard. I'd never heard anything like it. It scared me even in my drunken state, and I hustled back to the tent as quickly as I could to wake up my buddies. I shook them awake, and they were starting to tell me that they were still drunk and confused, asking me who the hell I am for waking them up. I proceeded to tell them, that I heard a weird sound, and told them to help me check it out. They basically all told me to piss off. I wasn't very happy by this, so I grabbed my gun and went out, and fired a few rounds to scare off whatever was making that sound, and hoping that my buddies would use this cue to come out to see what was wrong. After unloading those few rounds, the whooping stopped. I stayed up for a few more hours, before passing out from sheer exhaustion. The next morning, we all barely remembered that night we were so wasted. Being sober now, we all talked about it, and what I heard last night. No one could explain what the sound was or the cause of it. The day went smooth, and nothing out of the ordinary happened. The next night is what really did it for us. After about 9.30, we were sitting around the fire when we smelt this horrific smell. The only way I can describe it is if you were to mix piss, shit, and vomit together and multiply that by a hundred. We all looked at each other, trying to figure out what the origin of this awful smell could be. It lingered for about ten minutes and then went away. We couldn't explain it. None of us farted or anything, so we had no idea what it could be. Soon after that, we could hear leaves being crunched, and twigs snapping. To us, this was no big deal. The forest can make all sorts of scary noises, so we ignored it. The time came for bed, so we all crawled into the tent to doze off. Maybe twenty minutes after going to bed, we felt and heard something hit the tent. We all immediately sprung out of our sleeping bags, and reassuring each other what we just witnessed. Was someone messing with us? We grabbed our guns, loaded them and quietly snuck out, pointing them in every direction, and calling out, Hello? Who's there? Show yourself. There was no response. I called out again a bit louder this time, when all of a sudden we got pelted with rocks, 
and things being thrown at us. We fired our weapons into the air, and it stopped all of a sudden. We were all frantically looking around, scanning the forest for any possible movement, but there was none. That stench came back. We fired more rounds off this time into the trees, and the whooping started again. It was closer. Whatever it was, we didn't want to find out. By this time, we were all basically crapping ourselves due to pure fear. We had never experienced anything like that. I saw some movement in the distance, finally, to which, after spotting, I yelled at it and fired. This strange scream or roar blared our eardrums. It was sort of like a sound that if you were to combine a hyena and lion, would make. It lasted for only a few seconds, and the sound of branches being broken and leaves getting stomped on faded away into the distance. We stayed up the entire night and headed out at dawn. Whatever it was, I am positive it was some kind of Bigfoot. I am also 100% sure that I hit it with my shot. I never saw its features, so I could never really identify it. But I will forever wonder what that thing was that night that scared us to the bone. Needless to say, we will not be returning to that spot again. This first story takes place in the Chuska Mountains in the 80s. My friend was about six years old and was up in the mountains for a family reunion at the family cabin. The cabin is in a meadow with a stone well near the tree line. They spent the day doing typical reunion things like three-legged races, flag football and whatnot. The sun starts setting and the families retire to the cabin and call it a day. The older people plan to sleep in the two bedrooms and the kids would sleep on bed slash cots set up in the living room. All was well, and the kids were tucked into bed. My friend Sandra is uneasy and is reluctant to go to sleep. She is wide awake and everyone falls asleep. Sandra tosses and turns, unable to shake her strange feeling, when suddenly her feeling turns immediately to fear as she hears something big, something heavy, making its way across the porch. Sandra fears that it may be a bear looking for food. Little did she know, it would be much worse. She could make up the shadow of something large and dark as it passes the window. It is making its way to the door, and she sees that the family don't lock the door. She is watching it, too scared to move or scream, and she sees the doorknob rattle back and forth. Whatever is trying to open the door, succeeds. And the room floods with the most putrid stench, and she sees a large human hand make its way through the door. Sandra finally summons her strength and screams, Dad! Her father runs in and sees Sandra pointing at the door. He sees the hands and runs to the door, and yells, Hank, grab the gun! Whatever was at the door, runs. It was a full moon, and in the moonlight they see the creature run across the yard. Hank, with a hunting rifle in hand, looks through the scope, and sees the creature crouching behind the well. Sandra's father assumes it's a bear, and tells Hank to shoot. Hank pulls the trigger, and hears the bullet ricochet off the well. All thought of this being a bear is diminished instantly, when the creature stands up on two feet, and runs towards the tree line. They never saw the creature again. I went out to a forest with my uncle one evening. We were going to go night hunting, but it got cut short due to what we witnessed. We were just there for deer. An hour or so passed, and it was getting quite dark in the woods. While we were making our way around the woods, I heard a grunting noise nearby. It creeped me out for a second, and my uncle suggested it was probably just a wild boar. I turned around with my flashlight to see if there were any signs of nearby boar. What my light fell upon horrified me. 
the light from my flashlight fell upon an eye of a huge tall creature which appeared to be squatting. I grabbed my uncle's arm, as I was scared as hell. My uncle told me to stay back, and we slowly backed away. The creature also backed away. I genuinely believe I saw a Sasquatch that night. I've had several Bigfoot encounters within the city limits of Tampa, Florida. I know it sounds unbelievable. I've lived near the Hillsborough River, and after my encounter, I looked at my area on Google Maps. To my surprise, there is a lot of wooded area along the river leading out of the city. For about two weeks straight, I felt like I was being watched and stalked. Monday through Friday, I left my studio apartment at 5am to catch the bus to work. I walk to the bus, and it is on an extremely dark road that is alongside the river, where the entrance to my apartment complex intersects with this road that's wooded, if you know Florida forests. Then you know it can be quite intimidating, because the forests are very dense. I walk left from my community, onto the only sidewalk. Across the street is the waterfront to the river, with thick vegetation. I walk about a quarter of a mile before there is a house on the riverside on the street. On the left, I do walk past two fenced-in apartment communities. I wanted to give you an idea of the terrain. When I felt like I was being stalked, I took off my Bluetooth headphones to listen. I heard the occasional twig snapping, and this reassured me that my spidey senses were correct. This continued for two weeks. I was a nervous wreck. I had been listening to Bigfoot encounters on YouTube for a while. I was learning all that I could about them, but I never thought that I could be stalked by one in Tampa. Until Monday, on the third week, I felt like I was being stalked. As soon as I turned left onto the sidewalk from my complex, do I hear a loud rock clacking. I don't listen to my headphones in the morning anymore. I pretended to be listening to them, and when I heard the rocks striking each other, my heart skipped a beat. Then I heard a familiar Bigfoot yell that I heard from a YouTube video. By this time, my heart was pounding. I almost crapped myself. I almost turned around, but stopped myself. I wanted to run so badly. Somehow I was able to barely flinch. I kept my stride, acting like I didn't hear a thing. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. As if what happened wasn't enough, I literally felt a rock land behind me. It must have had some considerable weight to it, because I felt the impact through my shoes. I was terrified. I thought I might not make it to the bus stop. Reflecting back on the encounter, I believe there was more than one during this. There might have been a juvenile there as well. They get aggressive when people get too close to their offspring. And the next morning about the same time, I could hear it having a massive temper tantrum. It was letting out the loudest and longest yells I've ever heard. I can only imagine how homeowners felt. And after that, I couldn't walk that way anymore, and had to take a different route to work which meant I had to catch the bus an hour and a half earlier. Every once in a while I would walk that way, to get some smokes from the gas station at around 10pm. I'd bring my pit bull, and we would both hear the occasional twigs snapping. She kept a constant eye over by the river. Sometimes it looked like she was staring at a thing, and wouldn't budge. She's an extremely protective and fearless dog, and has never backed down from anyone, other than thunderstorms, or Bigfoots. A long time ago, I worked from a high security prison facility, that was very isolated, and covered by woods. I didn't work here long, but there were a few times when I would chat with inmates, and they'd tell me stories of the things that they would hear in the night. 
sometimes they would hear the sounds of crashing in the woods. The equivalent of a bulldozer pulverising trees with no mercy, on its endless pursuit of who knows what. Some nights they wouldn't be able to sleep, and when they'd report it to the guard, the guard would be just as scared, but at least they were inside and not out there. There'd be times where they would hear howls in the night, almost unfathomable sounds that they couldn't think could be created by either man or known animal. Safe to say, the prisoners were quite scared to be there. It only took a few weeks before I heard something myself. I was outside having a smoke break, when out of nowhere, this howl emerges from the forest. It's a sound the likes of which I've never heard. I found it utterly terrifying. I still don't know what could make that sound, but I have been told that elk make some pretty funky noises. But after listening to some recordings, it definitely wasn't that. It was way, way scarier. It's not like that sound is something you'd forget. In any case, after about two months of working there, the spooky vibes took control, and I chose to leave. Best decision I ever made. This is a second-hand story that's been told to me by long-time legit cowboys, but is also corroborated with a newspaper story. In the southeastern High Sierra, there is a river called the South Fork of the Kern, and it's a good-sized river. The Pacific Crest Trail crosses the river on a huge metal footbridge that must be repaired by Forest Service personnel every few years. One time during repairs, the men were interrupted by a horrendously loud bellowing scream. They turned to look towards the scream, and supposedly right there was a freaking Bigfoot in all his glory. The men were armed, and they supposedly shot at it, but it didn't do much as they booked it out of there and never returned. I've been on this bridge many times, and have camped in the area all my life, as well as with my father. One time about ten years after the bridge event, my dad was camping in the area with his friend. One night, my dad was awoken by something walking around the tent. Now for context, that tent is about eight foot tall in the middle. My dad says something pushed down on the top of the tent, directly down and then walked off. He tried to wake his buddy up, but he slept through it. I'm not saying it was a Bigfoot, but with those events being so close, I don't know man, it scares me a little. There was this one encounter I had, that really stands out among everything that's happened to me. I was hiking the ridges above Raton, I'd been out quite a while, when I came across a well-picked-over deer carcass. There weren't any fresh tracks around it, but that's a real clear identification that I'm on some large predator's home turf. Time to go. As I'm climbing down the ridge, not the way I came up, mind you, I see a flat area with an odd round stone formation. Think Stonehenge, but the rocks aren't squared off. Each of the rocks are taller than I am, and formed a darn near perfect circle. I'm a little creeped out, but I step in for a closer look. The second I cross through the rocks, it was like an electric shock. Immediate goosebumps. The hair on my neck is standing up, and every nerve in my body is screaming at me to be somewhere else right now. I scrambled down the rest of the ridge, way out of control. I was lucky not to hurt myself at some point, because I was just jumping without looking where I was going, and I didn't look back once. Twenty years on, I still can't explain my reaction. I've not given to extreme flights of fancy. I'm not afraid of things that go bump in the night, and I'm not religious and don't believe in evil with a capital E. But I did that day. Something horrific happened there once. 
and it will happen again. Stay out of the woods. My brother-in-law was hunting in the hill countryside outside of Austin as a teen. He was watching for an area of deer. There was a clearing with some rocks, and it was early morning, so it was pretty dark. He could mostly see silhouettes. At some point, one of the rocks stood upright and walked away. Turns out it wasn't a rock. He to this day believes it was a Sasquatch. He said it made him absolutely crap his pants. He also acknowledged it could have been some crazy homeless guy living in the woods. You know, given that Austin wasn't that far away. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. I do hope that you enjoyed tonight's tales of Bigfoot and cryptids. Truly some spooky stuff. If you did like the video, be sure to show it some love. You know what to do. Also, huge thank you as always to my amazing patrons. Their names can be seen on screen now. And if you'd like your name here as well as some awesome rewards, please consider checking out the link. It does help me out a lot when it comes to running the channel and everything else. So thanks guys. If there's a story that you would like to share, whether it be Bigfoot related or not, you can send it to me. And the info regarding that can be found in the description via Reddit or email. Please be sure to plaster plenty of punctuation, paragraphing and description into your story though, because without it, I probably won't read it as those are very three important points when narrating a good story. But anyway, for now guys, it's time to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.